so got an introduction now we're going into a wharf area it's actually a, um, it's got a dry area dry dock for repairing boats but originally the peak Paris canal came all the way up here but in order to get further up into the Pennines they had to come up with a tramway system steam power was being pioneered and worked on but horses moved the cargo along the track a tram track down to the start of its Whaley Bridge Basin it was the linking of the Comfort and High Peak Railway with the Peak Forest Canal that established Whaley Bridge as an important industrial centre when the canal opened in 1796 Whaley Bridge was already well established as a coal mining area although never as busy as nearby Bugsworth Basin the wharf was quietly successful from the start that to me looks like a place where it used to be originally filled from Manchester UK brief videos of the time Stephen got out hello everybody just so you know it's me who's here so this is an overflow it's got a wooden bridge over it leads down to the river guy in there this is a place for walkers lovely sight shame about that traffic noise but we are going to move along So way back in time, it was a tram, they call it a tramway, but it originally was a train, but it was pulled by horses. Originally, trains were going to be pulled by horses, hence the wooden struts for the horses to walk on in the middle of the rails. But I'm going to shut up now. Once upon a time, everything was horses pulled by horses on cobbled roads so there was a time when canals were actually brand new and the height of technology now I think this may have been a branch that went further over to there and that's Outram House 1832 AD this is 1832 AD also so it's a good warehouse it's set in a much older village got some Bugsworth Avenue no Bingsworth Avenue sorry so yeah we're just back off from that building that's the goods warehouse And apart from the road, we're in a very rural setting. It's for walkers now. The car obviously took over the train and the canal. That's Bingsworth Avenue. Old stone walling in this area as well. Uh, Wally Bridge Wharf, Peak Forest Canal Wharf, and Transshipment Warehouse. It's the terminus for the Cromford and High Peak Railway. The wharf was quietly successful from the start because limestone and burnt lime were shipped away to Manchester and beyond that uh, via the Peak Forest and Ashton Canals. So compare 1890s Whaler Bridge Basin. There's an old crane mechanism. You know, with one of the modern parts in the world, or city rail stations. It just basically looks like a barn, but it wasn't. This is a major hub. It's actually called Outram House over the road, so something to do with Benjamin Outram. Uh, in many places, uh, these railways meant the end of the canal. Uh, surprisingly, this site suddenly became much busier when the Cromford and High Peak Railway opened in 1831 that's bringing the limestone and burnt lime down to the Peak Forest Canal 
at Wally Bridge instead of the original tramway. David Bellhouse Jr. had already built the world's first railway warehouse. That was for the Liverpool and Manchester Railway Company um, in 1830. So by 1832, the Manchester contractor was employed to extend this warehouse here at Whaley Bridge. So the wagons with burnt lime were covered with tarpaulins and shipped down the railway. So the railway came here also and the tramway ran through here. There was a three-storey warehouse that was built here in about 1801 by Thomas Brown, the resident engineer for the Peak Forest Canal. Inside the building, warehousemen winched goods between boats and the first and second floors through trapdoors. Other workers lifted goods in and out of the boats by means of they had two cranes attached to cast iron columns at the side of the canal. But I think they were wooden cranes. So there is some traffic around here in the background that's right next to a major modern road. So sometime in 1915 or 16, the top floor of the original warehouse was removed. The roof was reshaped to match the 1830s extension and the stone archway was replaced by a cast iron beam making the building that we are looking at today. We're going to explore more of the Peak Forest and this is also an introduction now into canals. Mainly the rest of my videos are all about canals. Everything else was a little bit mixed up and now we've got here, let's start. Yeah, we've got an overflow, that's basically for the whole canal because it's level all the way to the first locks. So we'll follow the towpath, uh, there's a horse tunnel to explore the Peak Forest Canal further or across the footbridge from this point to go further into the Peak Forest but we're going to follow the canal. It was once a hive of industrial activity with an odour of sulphur dioxide in the air from the coal used to fire the lime kilns. The basin and canal beyond has now been restored by volunteers of the Inland Waterways Protection Society with the support of British Waterways and many other partners. So it looks like these boats are moored here permanently. Some interesting walks, but that road really does spoil it. First culverts coming up, so I'm going to cut the video short there. I'll stop there. There's plenty of canals to walk down. Just towards the end of this row of boats, and we're going to get into Bugsworth Basin. So just down here is something that's on my shopping list that I wanted to film, part of history. Just get that adjusted. So that's a, basically a branch arm, but that led on to the canal, Rayleigh Bridge. That's the original peak forest. Yep, up there. And then the branch canal would have led up this way to Whaley Bridge. So down here is something I've only just recently found out about. It's called a horse tunnel. I'll be honest with you, originally I thought it was a horse bath. 
the original cobbles are still here. So you can lead a horse down this path. No, it won't slip. So it's going a little bit dark, but I'm not adjusting my filters all the time because it's just because I'm in the dark. There you go, there's a modern car park for a modern supermarket. So originally a horse would be led down here and then to cross over the canal you see it's hard because the horses are pulling the canal barges aren't they at this point. So this is designed for horses. Come down here, go under the canal but basically this is an aqueduct. So Benjamin Altram is coming up with all these kind of solutions you see. Other people have helped. We'll get an explanation of that as we go up the other side now. But I love it because it's all the old original stonework. You just peek through the tunnel here, watch, and you can see the Tesco, the uh, supermarket car park, and it just files the whole thing. Should just put a tree at the end of that tunnel, maybe. And then the horse would get up this side. Voila, you're on the other side of the canal for the peak forest. I think that's ingenious. And the horses don't wander off, you see. They're probably pit ponies from the kilns. They don't want them wandering off. So you could switch horses and the other ones can go back. So it'd be up that side there. And then we appear on the other side. So that's the wheelie connection. That's back down towards Manchester Way, or well, Marple Junction. Uh, Bugsworth Canal Basin is in this direction. We'll skip on up to there. Just showing you there's lots of moorings along the way. It's actually an aqueduct there, so the guide flows through the river guide. And some the geese that are usually along the canals are here too. So just as I'm showing along, I can see why people would moor here and stay here. It's very picturesque. It's only like living in a little caravan really. Just pick up the noise of that car. We're still in that same area. And then just the noise again with the road cross, crossing over. But what I love about these areas, how they've restored the canals and kept them as a reminder of our past. But when they do build modern stuff, they try and incorporate it with real stone and etc. It's a really good example of what they should do to canals. Not only for heritage, people can use it and wildlife can too. But it's great to walk on. You can't all be in the city all the time. I'm just saying, you know, I don't know what it is about these things, but it's so nice. People just don't see it and they just fly by in the car like, like we all do. We're missing an entire different world. Of course, some of the wildlife thrives on it. Uh, we've got a baby, a little chick. I won't go any closer because I get angry. But the chicks go out for a little, I don't know what you'd call it, a walk. We'd call it a paddle when we were in the water, so they must call it a little walk. <laughs> There's a little chick in there. I won't go closer because they spit at you and they can attack. Yeah, one of the other things, I don't know if you can get that, there's a little chick. That was a little fish you saw in the water. So it's essential for these geese, uh, for their habitat. I think there's five little chicks there. I'm not going to disturb them and I don't want to get attacked. So that's three interesting points, just on my walk to the basin. Like that four. <laughs> you know what I'm like? So here uh, originally was an overflow, which is no longer there, but the stonework's still there. You know what? It, it, it's amazing. That peep back into the forest, back into history. So when the water overflowed, it went over there, but now as we saw in Bailey Bridge, it just does it there. Because the canal's level all the way, you don't need two overflows. So we finally made it. So at the start of Manchester UK, three videos at a time, I was going to call it Time Capsule Vlogs. I called it Vlogs. I didn't understand what vlogs were and vlogs were when I first started ages ago. A vlog is a video log of information. A vlog is a written version. 
when we're peeping over the wall. That's the River Guyton, you can hear it, which becomes the River Mersey very soon, which is another interesting fact. But like I was just saying then, before I disappeared, <laughs> the main reason I started so I could achieve something and my first thing I thought in my head was to walk the entire length of any canal that goes through Greater Manchester so this is the start of that I'm going to start off here but this is somewhere I've never been before and part of the ambition for filming all the canals so we're up at Bugsworth Basin these are for unloading and loading there's another dock over there and there was a tram system, a tramway from up in the hills, from the limestone kilns. So we just filmed this area and I'm thinking the next video is going to be Marple, the aqueduct and the uh, train system, possibly New Mills area. And I'm going to get the Stockport branch canal. But for today, I'm just going to have a walk around here see what we can see. Some of the limestone kilns. There's a very big wharf area over there. So this area is Bailey Bridge and Bugsworth. It's now Buxton. But it used to be called Bugsworth and they changed the name from Bug. To Bux. Buxton spring water came from the same area, which was Bugsworth spring water it would have been originally. Just a little interesting fact. See I'm into all these little tunnels like that. Just fascinated. That must be maybe where well, goods would have come off this wharf here and been taken up there. It just ends. There's a big wharf on the other side of the wall. We're going to walk right around the area. Oh, and there's a little model of the wharf there. We'll have a look at that too. all kinds of little exciting things wharfs and docks and it goes under there see down under there and leads to the other side which will be down them steps but now see it's cut off but they would have been longer and attached to mills and, and a complete working system I'm feeling it went up that way Let's try and film this model. Let's hear that road again. Once you build a road like that in such a picturesque area, anyway. Horses were vital for the growth of industry alongside the Peak Forest Canal. This tunnel was built to allow horses coming from and going to Waldy Bridge Basin to walk below the canal and return to the towpath on the other side where they were rehitched to their boats. So that's a good model of how it would have looked. Various systems in the workings of it all. The lower basin said that only, only the new horses uh, needed to be accompanied by some, you know, a person. Uh, the more experienced animals knew the tunnels so well and these pathways so well they would just follow the path and even cross over to the other side all by themselves and then return <laughs> the combination of boats and horses was designed for efficiency most canals had horses as their primary function so they're designed with a horse path tow path uh, trains as i've said before were originally designed that way
Yeah, it was efficient originally before Stevenson came up with the steam engine. Of course, there were other railways. This is fantastic that existed. Uh, some were pulled by horses. And here is the original tramway. I will end because I know the sun's on us. But I tend to film things on purpose in the twilight. That will become apparent. Because the thing is, I'm showing it's twilight years. So it's all finished now. So it's as it goes to sleep, as it were. So yeah, that's an example of tramway there. Still set in the stone. And the stone in the middle of these should be fairly warm from the horse's hooves, which it is. Uh, Stevenson just invented the rocket and the first paid public railway. That's, that's what he is actually famous for, but originally trains they were heading towards being pulled by horses uh, you know a straight line pulling things it makes sense a single horse hauled a boat loaded with around 25 tons of limestone or coal sometimes a single horse hauled two loaded boats at a time so 50 tons now i know we've got a um, fairly noisy road there spoiling it all <laughs> behind the trees but we can't see it there is actually a road for visitors so we can't get away from the fact we are in fact in the modern world what a beautiful place this really is and it is one of my missions shall we say Sodbrook Reservoir Valves one of two pairs of draw-off valves installed at Toddbrook Reservoir to control the supply of water to the Peak Forest, Aston and Macclesfield canals. The unit consists of two-handed, sorry, two hand-operated valves in tandem. One used as a stop valve and the second to control the rate of flow to the canal. So it's the a siphon system. So what was brought here? One was at the reservoir nearby and one was here and it filled from here and uh, that will fill the entire canal. I am Manchester UK, caught myself on video <laughs> by accident there. It's a lot harder than you think, you know, to pan out and carry on talking and write your own scripts and produce all your own stuff and get here on time. <clears throat> so I have to go for it as well, that's the other thing. Sometimes quality can be an issue, but I'm here, and if I thought, oh, I don't like that, I'd have to come back a, an entire another day. And the, the whole idea of showing history in this farm, it includes doing the vlogs, because in 20 years from now, people will be like, I can't believe they were vlogging like that. When you could just have a drone that flies off your watch and films it for you, and AI will do your talking for you, and use your own accent and everything like that, because it is about how things change in time does change the technology very quickly in the world we live in. So here's the second wharf, it's disused. So have a look what happens to a canal when it's been disused and it's been planked off. It's still in water, but it's not used. But to be honest, it's not giving off that bad a smell, that. I'm in an area where nature sort of rules, so a bit of bacteria doesn't do any harm, really. Just get an idea of the depth. Of the whole thing. Get past the sun. It's really used quite a lot and here we go this is an example of the tramway at the top we saw oh I'm gonna push it with my shadow look <laughs> can't help but be silly because I'm enjoying it and this is a really really important part of the industrial revolution which changed our entire world it's a replica peak forest wagon Obviously, originally these are pulled by horses, but very soon they'd have little steam trains. For authenticity, that's what it was like.
And horses, remember, they pull them along and they got so used to doing the same path that they could walk these paths without handlers. And that is the start of the Industrial Revolution, you see. Having systems that operate in a cycle. Although it looks like a straight line, it doesn't, it works in a cycle. Things start off here, boats go down, deliver them, boats come back up and then they go back down. It becomes a cycle that everything in the world is now like that. Well, to do with trade it is. Okay. It's an ambition to actually come here. I've been to all the canals, you see, so yeah. It's a long time waiting to come here. <laughs> So just speaking to a friendly local and you know what I'm leaving that in I'm not cutting it out because back in the day I never used to cut anything out like I say I'm trying to film it for historical purposes like in the future we've had that many coronaviruses that nobody talks to each other anymore you have to email each other even when you stood next to each other who knows so there's another little bridge for the horses we'll just do a colour thing on that it's the sun, you see. It's becoming a bit unbearable, but what I said, like I said, I'm here on my own, I don't have a technical crew, anything like that. So the horses would have been led about and around here, and as I said, they started to do it all by themselves. And that's what we call it, it's been panked off. And there's a little thing in case chicks get stuck in there, a plank of wood to get them out. What a fantastic place, Manchester. And this is what makes me proud to be a Manchester Really does. Okay, so the colours are gone ski with, so I'm just blending over there. And we're heading off now to join the next sections that lead off down back into Oz Manchester. So this is the start of something, that's what I'm trying to say, about the infrastructure of Manchester changing over the last 200, 250 years. All starts here. Now they need a, a way to connect this to Manchester so it can make serious money. And the canals go in place everywhere for that reason alone. Whether it's coal from up, in the uh, coal seams of Manchester, however it's cotton from the mills up in the Lancashire, Berry, Rottenstall area. Everything, and they all flow down into the heart of Manchester. There you go, well, long before the steam trains, these were the, what they came up with. And they look, they're so picturesque now, but they were a brilliant, brilliant idea. 50 tonnes which is 10 times what they could pour on the roads. So that's about five tons on the road. Uh, so that's the Peak Forest Canal, how it works, its systems, this horse tunnel, and one branch line here, bringing lime towards the canal. Horses were used on local tramways to bring limestone to the canal. Once the tramway, uh, tramway's wagons had been unloaded, a team of four to five horses working in line was used to haul 12 empty wagons or six loaded with coal back up the tramway. Yeah, Bugsworth Base, I suppose this is to make sure only narrow boats use this channel. And there's the old lock keeper's house, or the Bugsworth manager. Obviously, there's no lock keepers because there's no locks for six miles. Horses also shunted wagons around wharfs and basins, such as. Wally Bridge Wharf and Bugsworth Basin, which is where we're heading to. The Peak Forest Tramway, an upper Peak Forest Canal opened for trade in August 1796. German Wheatcroft became the first wharfinger or the manager of Bugsworth Wharf. So what's he called? A wharfinger. He was also responsible for company business at Whaley Bridge. I'm trying to say Wally Bridge, but I'm thinking of um, Walter Riley when I say that. Furnace Vale and the company limestone quarries near Dove Holes, Dove Holes, 
as his duties were so wide-ranging, the company provided him with his own horses and stable and barge. <laughs> Excellent. So, an interesting point just before we leave. The tramway, it probably had horses pulling the empty carts to the top, but it was probably gravity fed coming back down. Peak Forest Tramway was an early horse and gravity powered industrial railway. It's a system in Derbyshire, England. It opened for trade in the 31st of August 1796. It remained in operation until 1920s, but most of the route and the structures associated with the line remain. The western section of the line is now the route of the Peak Forest Tramway Trail. Um, built by Benjamin Outram, the tramway was initially single track on a four foot two inch cage constructed of stone sleeper blocks and L section cast iron rails which we've seen. Uh, they were fastened directly into the blocks. Uh, it's the same manner in you know most of the railways of that day. The rails known as gang rails are plate provided by Benjamin Outram and company who also supplied the mineral wagons. So a lot of these pioneers had been working in the industry and had their own businesses so it was profitable for them. Some brilliant ideas though did come out of these people. Uh, from Bugsworth it rose 129 feet 39 meters uh, to Whitehall and proceeded to Chapel Milton on the level it climbed 56 and a half feet to the base of the inclined plane. At the aid of acceleration from the top and braking at the foot. And if we go down, and we'll join the next video. Got something stuck to my camera. <laughs> that could have ruined my entire day filming. Right next to the lens is a little fly. <laughs> Shouldn't really reveal the sort of things. All these little quirky places you can go. Can you hear the little chirps? I better go because the mum and dad are looking a bit angry with me. I'll talk about that further down the playlist, how these birds evolved to be less likely to attack you. At first it was drawn up by horses, but then partially loaded wagons were drawn up. Initially by a rope was tried, and followed by a patent twisted chain passing round the wheel, with a brake to control it at the pit top. Eventually a chain with 5 inch links was purchased which proved more equal to the work. The elevated tramway branch forms part of the scheduled ancient monuments of Bugworth Basin. It is believed that the Grade 2 listed Stodehart Tunnel was the oldest railway tunnel in the world until archaeological work on the Butterley Gang Road, also in Derbyshire, in May 2013, suggested that that tunnel on the line was older than the Stodart Tunnel. And then we're on the other side, so that would be okay. If you, please like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed that video. A brief video of time with Stephen Goddard. Thanks very much, as I said, for watching. And then we're on the other side, so that would be... Action. There once was an ugly duckling. And this is what makes me proud to be a Manchester. A Mancunian. <laughs>